So welcome back to being K Engineering, where engineers come to learn. Now we are here with the team Alphas. Don't go by their age. They are amazing engineers, STEM uh, background people. I'm going to know what, all about them and what they are they doing. And it's a very re resourceful podcast where we're going to learn a lot about robotics, electronics, design, competitions, etc. So let's get uh, get into it. Let's introduce yourself. Who you are? What's your background? What are you guys doing here? What exactly is Team Alpha? So hi, I'm Nitin. So basically, we're a group of 14 members. All right. We are from different different schools across Hyderabad. Awesome. So we collaborated and gathered and teamed up as a team named Alphas, and we work on participating and encouraging STEM in, okay. with the youth and everything. Awesome. So like, uh, like, uh, so we'll just go around, introduce yourself. What's your name? What are you guys doing? What are you studying right now? What? I am Nitin. Mm -hmm. I study in Oak Ridge International. I am the team lead for this uh, team Alphas. Mm -hmm. I've been in this uh, FTC team since the past three years. Awesome. Uh, I'm Sneha. I am a Oak Ridge at like I'm a tenth grader at Oak Ridge International School, Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. I am a programmer at the team. I also like I also conduct the outreach sessions and outreach programs. Awesome. And I recently joined the team and like this year I joined the team. Awesome. So, yeah. I'm Prabhav, I study at Chirac International and I'm the head of design so I supervise the making of the robot and I do a bunch of other things but that's my main role in this team. Awesome. Uh, my name is Kanish, I'm also from Oak Ridge and I'm currently in 9th and I'm also, I'm currently a builder but I'm getting myself into design and coding also currently. Awesome. Uh, my name is Uddhav, I'm also going to Oak Ridge International School. Right now I'm part of the design team under Prabhav. So Got I it. work on creating the t-shirt and stuff like that. Got it. So you're like a team of 15 people now. You're 14. 14, 14 people. 14. So 14. Uh, everyone is like in the schooling age. Yeah. Except awesome. everyone are below 11th graders. Below 11th graders. Awesome. So like, how did this? Like, how did you guys get together? Now let's answer that first question. How did like people, students from around the city? How did you guys get together in one place and decided, let hey, let's make a robot. Actually, we have a we have a robotics institute uh, um, founded by Shalini Jetty. She's mm -hmm. a mentor. Yes. Shalini, ma'am, you know she's a really enthusiast, big enthusiast for robotics and first competitions. Mm -hmm. So she she has been part of this uh, first competition since the past ten years. So her expertise and her you know passion for STEM has really attracted us towards her. Mm -hmm. And you know we have been we have actually we were actually students of technic education before this. Mm -hmm. So she found out that she you know identified that passion that we had is useful more useful for such competitions. And you know we can we have that capability to encourage more STEM uh, youth towards this activities because you know the thing is many people many students across Hyderabad or anywhere they have a very unique interest towards robotics and they do not have that. You know, those many opportunities to showcase that. True. This is a really wonderful, you know, stream that students can opt for. Mm -hmm. And it is a time captivating activity. So basically you guys, uh, like, uh, there's something called technique education. You guys all met there and like from there you guys migrated to form this team to take part in the competitions. Does that summarize everything? Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. So you like, so now that on a wholesome, I understand it. Now, how does... Where does your individual passion for robotics or let's say design, coding, where did that come from? I just go on, go around and see like uh, what's what's your background and how did you get into it? Where did the passion come from? Who is your inspiration? Yeah, so basically I've been participating in such competitions since the age of around nine. Okay. Uh, so what? I was really interested in robotics from a young age. Personally speaking, I used to build a lot of Legos when I was like three, Got four, it. five years old. So then I joined these classes, started from simple machines like building a seesaw and a pulley, mm -hmm. understood the logic behind that. And slowly, slowly we graduated from competition to competition we, and we reached the stage over mm -hmm. here. So now, now we do 3D printing, CAD, all of these different things. It's quite interesting, personally speaking. I like designing on software such as Fusion 360 mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's getting it laser cut. It's a really great feeling that you can make something out of your own mind, something that you can design and something that is physically seen, something that is tangible that you can see the outcome awesome. of. Yeah. yeah, I take I can uh, totally relate to it. Relate to it uh, personally. I am also a mechanical engineer. Did my masters there. The one thing that gravitated me towards it basically to be able to build something. I work mostly on the automation machinery side, and something that you, you can see, you can feel whatever whatever you build. Something that really excites me as well. So I can re totally relate it to you. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. I completely understand <laughs> that feeling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so I personally, I at a young age, I wasn't really into robotics as such. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't do anything like proper. Of, uh, I was building lots of Legos. Like, of course, I did build a few Legos, but okay. never at a high scale, like going to any classes. Mm-hmm. But this year is actually when I joined Alphas. So this is when I started to develop a passion for it. Got and it. I, even though now I'm not on a major scale in programming and building, I found myself being useful in, for example, design, which is mm-hmm. what I'm doing right now. Got it. So basically, so I can see a lot of people are mentioning the Legos. So Legos is like a, the building blocks or stepping stone where yes, stepping you stone. guys got your, a lot of your passion from. Mm-hmm. So like building things. Okay, go ahead. So when I was actually a child, I actually like the movie Transformers a lot. Oh, so that really got me yeah. into like yeah, robotics. <laughs> yeah. So like everyone likes the movie, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. Michael Bay is the best. Yeah. So like that really got me into robotics. Just mm. the thought of like something like that could be made by us. Mm-hmm. And like it just like, found like really interesting me. Like I was really fond to it. Mm-hmm. So I like, really wanted to get into it. So like slowly, one, step by step, I got into robotics. Like I started with Legos. Mm-hmm. And like just like I took one step by a time. Now I'm over here and like making robots like these. Awesome. 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 Uh, so like at a young, not at a young age, but recently when I was like in seventh grade, uh, I used to go to these coding classes and I found out that I could make my own like platforms and I got really fascinated. So I was like, why not make this? Why not do that? Why not do this? So I was like, oh my God, let's make our own social media page. Okay, let's do like okay. gaming and everything. Mm-hmm. I made like various uh, platforms and all. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're all in there, but then yeah. I just made that and I'm also like uh, helping people a lot so I wanted to spread the idea of STEM mm-hmm. so I help like through this through Team Alphas we actually we converted and like we helped NGOs mm-hmm. by like conducting uh, Lego workshops so awesome. I wanted to spread the message of STEM throughout. So you're not only passion, your passion for engineering yeah. but also your passion for teaching other people yeah. uh, to help them out yeah. to learn them. Awesome. I I'm, I'm not say that I'm passionate from my childhood. Mm-hmm. Definitely, I was really passionate into sports in my childhood. That was one thing that is common with everyone. Mm-hmm. But whenever I met Shalini, ma'am, mm-hmm. that is when you know I was I got in I got that idea and build that robotics is something that I have to choose for my future and uh, robotics is something where my interest lies because whenever I come into this workspace it is when I don't feel like the time is running okay that is when I lose the track of time that's what they that say. is what is happiness that is what happiness is so that is I could find it in here so Got it. Yeah, that's what they say do what you love and exactly. you don't feel anything yeah. awesome so two, two points that stuck out for me is basically uh, at the young age when you're building Legos that's where the building uh, mindset comes up and you guys had an amazing mentor where who drove all those passion and all those thoughts constructed in a single line like hey focus on this so there was a that that's that's a part of a mentor a teacher whatever you're gonna call uh, who gonna keep all the ideas and like focus on to one point so i'm glad that you guys have you guys have that so okay i had i got your introduction and everything so now let's understand like why are you guys building it what competition are you competing in it what's the process what is this competition all about let me know yeah so basically this is a robot that we built for the competition that is there on january 24th of 2024 okay it is a it is the competition is named first tech challenge first tech challenge, challenge. Okay. it is an it is a comp- set of competitions that is organized by an org community called first so mm-hmm. this first community conducts competitions all over the globe more than 130 countries it covers awesome and it is a very known and popular spo- uh, you know comp- uh, competition in the us and the other countries mm-hmm. here it is slowly picking up the pace because you know it's uses and advantages of the stem using stem skills and mm-hmm. you know learning more about the mechanical parts and mm-hmm. programming is really great uh, mm-hmm. initiative by first mm-hmm. so we I have been I have participated in another season before season so basically how this the competition works is uh, you know it is season wise Okay. Every year, the concept of the competition changes. Every year, the task that we give is changing. Okay. So we use different mechanisms to build the robot to complete the tasks. Just to give an example, what is the, what is this season's? What are the tasks that we need to complete? So basically, this season's name is Center Stage. Mm-hmm. It every season there is a name given to the you know. Uh, mm-hmm competition this year okay. it is center stage where we have to pick up pixels and put it on the blackboard that is there 
Okay, so you are playing Tetris with robotics? Kind of. Kind of. You okay. can say that. Uh -huh. Awesome. So, yeah, you like, so this is the pick and place robot. Awesome, awesome. Uh, anything you want to add? Yeah, so a little more about FIRST and what these competitions are. Personally, I've been participating in the age of nine. I've done over seven to eight competitions. So okay. the full form is for inspiration of recognition of science and technology. So basically what they do is they promote STEAM, now STEAM, all around the world. And while in India, we do have opportunities. Like obviously we're the hub of engineers. Yeah. I mean, India's known worldwide for yes. producing people that are interested in STEM. The youth don't have so many opportunities. Sure. And uh, yeah. this is a great avenue for us to explore like our interest from a young age. Because obviously if you start early, then you'll mm -hmm. gain more proficiency at that field. Definitely. And uh, we also try to like help the underprivileged because that's a big part of mm -hmm. our uh, culture over here. So okay. we work, we're going to we're going to work with a foundation called Ashray Akruti. Mm -hmm. uh, coming up in the next two to three days okay. there are deaf and mute schools so we're going to teach those children about stem everyone we believe everyone should have equal opportunities to explore such fields like robotics science definitely whatever they're interested in mm -hmm. and it's great to start at a young age yeah definitely definitely agree with you uh, so yeah uh, uh, as we are at the point i understand what ftc is and what it does so it's like how many competitions will be there in what is the season like six months is the season one year is the season what's the season how many competitions are there like say i want to participate in a competition how do i register for it like do i need to have a team like what like let's say individually or do i need to form a team what's the what's the procedure there first is known for team management and team skills building team skills you know mm -hmm. when you work in a team you have that spirit for collaboration you have that spirit with team working mm -hmm. so we have to have a team of at least uh, you know there is no minimum number mm -hmm. but there's a maximum number because you know people want to get into it as much as possible so there's a maximum limit of 15 members of the team okay so yeah and this year i mean it depends from team to team when they would like to start their preparation for the mm -hmm. season but uh, usually the game manual releases around june july august mm -hmm. that is when we have two sets of game manuals one is with the basic rules of the mat and the basic rules of the uh, game where the second is the actual play what do we have to pick what do we have to place where okay. do we have to place so we get the details of that in the game manual too mm -hmm. which is again released around in september mm -hmm. october if i'm not wrong in that uh, mid area time is uh, the game manual too released so we teams usually start in may june during okay. the summer break when they have a lot of time, they'll sit down, brainstorm ideas, you know, what can be. <laughs> Suppose, for example, this year, apart from this robot, we made, you know, a badminton robot. Badminton we we robot. also made something, a robot that can do the older version of the, you know, pick and play. Suppose mm -hmm. we have to pick up block. Because we need to gain experience. experience Every year, some of the other new team member gets into the team. Mm -hmm. They have to learn what we're doing. They have to learn what we... Uh, program what we quote so we have that habit a culture ritual to you know mm -hmm. uh, do that um, experience uh, wise got it uh, coming to the point like you said this time it's a uh, pick and place and you are you've been building a couple of robots just to understand or get the, get used to this so coming to this robot that you have built here for the pick and place for this season can you just go through what all the things that are there and like what what are the mechanisms that are there what is the from the engineering point of view, what are the different things that, that goes into this? So basically the current current robot, to simplify it, it's pick and play, right? But our robot has to do a bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. So it has a camera, It's it has a camera, it can scan QR codes and place uh, pixels or whatever they want on as per that. Secondly, it has a paper plane launcher, if you see on the side, it can launch aeroplanes to 20 feet. That's one of the tasks we have to complete. Aeroplanes? Yeah. Paper aeroplanes. Okay, got it. Paper, Paper aeroplanes. Yeah. yeah. Then mm -hmm. another thing we do is the pixel actually it's basically a hexagon shape, so it's hard to pick up. So that's why we designed a custom intake with a ramp. Most of the parts you see, like for example the frame, it's all custom made, designed on CAD. We assemble it on CAD. Then we get it laser cut at places like T Works. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the other parts you see are 3D printed or they're all from the US. So the way the competition works is you have to buy these parts from companies called a company called GoBuilder or Rev Robotics. So okay. they, you buy them from the US, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing our ro robot can also do is it has odometry parts, right? It's, if you look at the bottom of the robot, mm -hmm. it can scan the uh, surroundings. So it can check how many rotations it has taken mm -hmm. and it can place itself uh, as for that. Yeah. Okay, so what I understood is there are there is a camera, there are 3D printed parts. 
uh, there is uh, there is a custom uh, custom parts where you have laser cut and uh, what are the other things i can see bunch of motors so let's uh, uh, you are telling this to someone on a fifth class level like dumb it down for me i don't know anything i am stupid no you need to tell me like what exactly does it does what like break this down okay, like yeah. break it down break it down for me like from basic like okay you mentioned a lot of complicated word cat cutting laser printing now what are those things give me dumb down version break it down what are the different things there yeah you want me to yeah. okay so basically our robot has seven motors okay let's segment wise ah. So segment wise, cameras, motors, fabrication parts, 3D printing parts, whatever. So whatever. Let's, let me start with the robot. How does it work? It works on a drive train, right? Mm -hmm. What that means is like a car, like a car has a drive train, it has a body. Mm -hmm. That's what the robot has as well. It goes front, back, left, right. And it can do a third thing that's called strafe. So what it does is it can go diagonally and parallelly as well. Awesome. But now moving on to the second part, picking up the pixels, that's the aim of the game, right? That's the main thing that we have to do, picking up those blocks. It has a ramp and it has linear slides. Those are basically like long arms that can go up and down and place these blocks. Thirdly, it has to scan QR codes. So we have a camera over there. It's a 180p camera. Mm -hmm. It's completely uh, programmed from before and we scan QR codes and place objects as per that. Mm -hmm. Now, moving on to the fourth, uh, fifth part, that's the paper plane launcher, right? It can launch paper planes over a distance of 20 feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's basically our robot in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, okay, now I am someone who is just uh, starting out. Now I called a bunch of my friends, let's like, say 15 of my friends. Now, now, now let's take the same example of pick and place robot. Now I need to build it. Now how do, how do I, where do I even start? Like where do I even start? How do I divide the team? Hey, let's say, hey, do you know coding? Do no. coding. Do you know cat? You do cat. Like how do I how do I segment this? How do I break it down? I have a problem. Like pick and place. That's 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 what we need to do. But how do I break down the 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 problem or the goal into multiple steps and say how do I uh, divide the work into multiple teams? Yeah. So firstly, I'd suggest before even picking up uh, this task, it's a mammoth task. It eats away at your school time. Mm -hmm. So firstly, make sure that all of your team members are ready to do the work. Because mm -hmm. personally, you have to put in at least 200 hours in a year. So yeah, that's yeah. a lot of your time that's going away, especially if you're a school student. Mm -hmm. Secondly, if you're starting out, start with something basic. Don't do anything fancy. Don't do anything mm -hmm. laser cutting, no CAD, nothing. Mm -hmm. Start with something basic. You get a kit. So you have to figure out a way to get the kits to India because you get them only in the US. You have to buy them from companies like Rev Robotics. Mm. Get a basic $600 kit. Mm. For that, you will need to fundraise money. You will need to organize the funds to buy such kits. So okay. make sure that you have the means to get those funds, means to secure. Mm. And don't hesitate to reach out. There are many teams like us in India and even us, we won't we won't hesitate to mentor you, to help you, mm. to tell you how to set up, right? Mm -hmm. So make sure you can secure the funds, number one. Okay. Then start with something basic, number two. And then slowly, slowly, as you gain experience, try to go get bigger. You can go on YouTube. There are tons of videos of people building robots. Get ideas from them. Mm -hmm. Talk to different teams. Reach out on uh, forums such as Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Every team is on there. And uh, nobody will stop helping you. So Got just it. make sure to reach out. Keep it basic. Keep it simple. That's all. Uh, are there any particular so right now what you mentioned a very wide range of resources even the forums youtube all these things uh, when i just type in how do i build a report there are a bunch of bunch of resources there. how do i channelize it is there any particular resource how do i is there any step-by-step -step manner that, that these are the skills that i need uh, to develop these are the courses or this is the roadmap can we like I don't know anything. Is there any roadmap that I can go in terms of learning robotics? Any particular skills that I'm looking for? Uh, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, so basically adding on to uh, Prabhav's point uh, on, you know, building starting with something basic, mm -hmm. you get the, after you get that kit of uh, Rev Robotics kit, it is a kit which has all the parts that you need to build a basic robot. And if you go on to the website, you get a step-by-step -step manual on how to build a robot. You know, this Rev gives this guidelines and instruction manuals on mm -hmm. assembling each and every part, either it be a screw or either it be a nut, mm -hmm. it gives you each and every detailed instruction for everything. Got so it. that is something that you can really start on and if you if you want to you know go to the programming of the robot you get a ton of resources online you get codes that are already there 
where you can start learning on how to you know you understand the code first and then you write it on your own Got so it. yeah so those that that is where we suggest you know start when a team is formed we start and on you know adding on to the point of starting team we also very much encourage teams to come on because you know the less competition the less it mm. is i mean the less popular it is when we get more competition then only we can identify how good we are Got so it. we always encourage you know competition in the, in hyderabad to be specific recently a team has been formed in oak ridge international school when awesome. we went and you know inspired the students over there when we talked to the principal and you know mm-hmm. ha- connect a session is really you mm. know something that we look forward to Got like it. in makers fair in tworks recently we mm. also did the uh, given so these outreach events are you know really helpful Got students it. to come approach can uh, uh, coming back uh, uh, coming back to the same point can you go through your uh, product development uh, cycle okay we have already now i see i think this is the finished product approximately okay okay so from the ideation stage to a finished product can you just go through your step by step what all did you guys do is there any challenges that you faced uh, if the challenges how did you solve it any any particular challenge that you want to go like i just want to go through the road map of from idea okay i need to build a robot which uh, which does a pick and place no he is the robot that can do that how 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 did we give, we give, we went from a idea stage to this uh, final product so like everyone else like any other team we start with a basic rev robot that we built mm-hmm. we build that robot and then then on top of that we come on we change extensions almost suppose we can we can we change these wheels it's going to give us better you know efficiency we change these motors to higher rpm motors is going to make us go faster okay. you know suppose for example this year we have to pick a pixel and put it on a blackboard yeah. so what mechanisms do you need you do you need an intake do you need an arm that's going to pick it up so basically in the start of this com- uh, season we brainstorm ideas for it and then we accordingly we design our cad designs on fusion 360 which is a popular app for you know designing cad designing mm-hmm. uh, so we design it on there and then we get parts and then we assemble it and then we find out so many you know problems come because everything does not go as we think so mm-hmm. we step by step you know resolve it yeah just to dumb it down a bit to make it easier to understand mm-hmm. what we do is we start with a very basic robot so what do we have to do we have to pick up a block for example mm-hmm. so what you do you build a basic robot that can go front back left right and it can pick up that block with a claw then we figure out ways ki how can we make this robot better mm-hmm. so we have our first prototype that's our first prototype basic robot secondly we go on to uh, different tasks we look at the different tasks on mm-hmm. the mat then we see can our robot do this can our robot do this how will we make it work mm-hmm. it's a lot of trial and error lot of trial and error personally even if you look at our current design that current design we would have to uh, do it four to five times just to get it right so okay. build multiple times start with something very basic go step by step one up let's say the first task is picking up a block okay we'll pick up a block then after that we want to launch a paper pl- aeroplane and pick up a block so build that onto the robot continue doing this until you reach a robot that you're happy with something that you Got think it. will be like the winning robot or the best robot that you can so give it your 100% and just don't hesitate about the results just keep on trying that so it's basically iterations on iterations yeah. Awesome. Exactly. All right. Uh, anything else you guys want to add? Like, how any experiences that you want to share while building this robot? So I'm actually a new member to the team. It's been barely two months for me to join like this group. Actually, mm-hmm. I've like well, it's been like really great for me. I, this group is basically a friend group for me at this point. I've like blended in really good, mm-hmm. and like for me, it's the first time experience hands on for like a mechanical like mechanical building. Because always before I've always been like manual wise like Legos. Mm-hmm. So it's my first time using mechanical like these like parts like these and these. Okay. So. It's like been interesting for me. I've understand. I've like understood what the parts are called, like what parts are used. And like rev is also new for me. Like there are like multiple parts I did not know existed. Now I know. Like now I know how to use them. Like okay. like apply them. Mm-hmm. And also I've started getting into some code. I've started learning Java. So like mm-hmm. I'm getting into like more diverse sections of the robot building. Okay. So like doing CAD or doing code. Mm-hmm. So I'm just, I'm just like exploring my options and where I could like go do the best in like Got currently. It. Awesome. So you guys uh, talk a lot about like you guys are learning coding, you like learning CAD, you learn you learning a lot of uh, other t- techniques or skills. Now I want to understand. Let's let's take a back chair and see like how is this impacting you guys? Like uh, in in the future now you have a you have no, more knowledge about what things exist in the world. How is it affecting your uh, making decision in the future side? Where which route you want to take in the career wise? 
or what do you want to do like how and there is a lot of team building i can see here segmenting of the team so how how were these skills uh, helping you live a better life or helping you in the future future decisions right so since we are obviously a robotics team and we're very passionate and there are many of us there are 14 of us we are learning many skills we're learning hands on how to build the robot mm-hmm. we're learning how to program the robot make it do what we want to do it for whatever is going to happen on the map mm-hmm. we're learning how to collaborate with each other and communicate with each other because without communication we cannot do anything mm-hmm. since there are 14 of us we need to coordinate who is coming what day Uh, how often are we going to hold the classes? What are we doing in these classes? Mm-hmm. And I feel that these skills will translate very heavily into the future, okay. where it, the world is only going to going to become more technology based. Mm-hmm. So, but we cannot forget that we also need collaboration because nobody is going to be working alone. Mm-hmm. So these skills are all just preparing us. It's like a trial course to what adult life is going to be. Mm-hmm. So, I would argue that this is an extremely important. thing for younger generations to understand and this build upon so a lot of soft skills and hard skills you're gaining here definitely going to help you yes. out in the coming future anything that you guys want to add anything else uh so as uh, as ubhav has said that we are learning so many skills I I it may sound cheesy or something but as people say we are the future we mm-hmm. need to have the skills Definitely. we need to have leadership we need to have like hands on skills we need to have communication and collaboration skills mm-hmm. and we also need to know how everything works yeah. and as people say technology is the future ai is the future mm-hmm. and like any other engineering software engineering thing is the future mm-hmm. people say that but they do not know that they are not able to learn it mm-hmm. so I would say that we need to know what each and everything is about and we need to get a hands on experience on everything mm-hmm. which gives us the skills which would help us in the future right. and as I'm learning right now myself I am learning how to like actually I am not in that in the billing but sometimes I help so I'm learning how to do a hands on experience right. sometimes I also like help designing I mean I'm not probably that perfect or professional but then I know how to do it and mm. I can help in that same time got it so inter- like multiple set of skills you know there's you probably on the coding side but you also know how a little bit on the design side that probably might these inter skills help you out uh, very much even I can relate to that even I'm more you know, more on the design side, but I also know how, how to code. So, yeah. dip, uh, these skills I'm not going to use in day day on day day basis, but definitely help me make a lot of better decisions. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, something I would like to add on. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very small, but then. As you see these big companies mm-hmm. they're not just like a single handed person they're mm-hmm. like a bunch of people mm-hmm. collaborating together communicating with each other and showing like teaching each other them them like the skills mm-hmm. so what over here what we are doing we are learning each and every person skills and we are learning from each other and we are also building a robot and like getting all the skills back together at the same time so supposedly next to next year when i graduate or next to next to next year in fact mm-hmm. as i'm 10th right now I will require these skills in my colleges or anywhere, okay. and this will help me throughout. Got it. Yeah, adding on to that, talking about the use, those uses of this in the future, I can you know very much relate to that because since I am in twelfth grade right now, I can you know a lot of concepts about physics that I am learning in my you know textbook, whatever textbook I am able to you know showcase that in this uh, in here. Suppose for example, at what speed do you need to intake so that it goes into a box or it goes into that? Mm. Um, that is what you learn in the textbook, but this is an opportunity for me to you know actually practically learn more. About about it okay. and you know talking more about the practical uses in future since i'm graduating now i have to look after universities that i have to go so when i look at their curriculum they only have this i mean they have coding they have you know mm-hmm. uh, cad in they have design in different mm-hmm. things and everything so whatever we learn over here is kind of the foundation for our career that we build in future definitely totally on that okay let's uh, let's uh, let's let's step back from the engineering part obviously this takes a lot of resources how are you guys managing it uh, you mentioned there is a sponsorship you look go out for sponsorship but there also requires a lot of marketing so how how are you guys handling apart from the engineering part and the mentoring part 
uh, how are you guys handling the financial part and the marketing part so yeah whenever we whenever a person comes into this workspace or who wants to be part of the team we ask them to choose which team they are in for example we have we divide ourselves into design team build team programming team and you know fundraising team so technical and non technical so we encourage them to choose one technical and one non technical so that they can help in building as part as fundraising and skills mm-hmm. uh so as a part of this entire competition we need a lot of funds to make our robot and to do various things throughout yes. the entire competition so two of there are two things which help us throughout the entire competition one is the sponsors and the others are the like the fundraising parts of the outreach okay so we have 14 sponsors this awesome. year awesome mm-hmm. our major sponsor kakinada seaports okay whereas we also have uh we have actually kakinara sponsored us with like 5 lakhs oh awesome yeah and the other sponsors like radha tnt mm-hmm. tipcon capacitors or tibrivar capacitors mm-hmm. uh kirti industries swasha farms and technic education okay tvox as well has been helping us a lot mm-hmm. in making our parts like uh, getting mm-hmm. our parts printed or cut uh yeah even grandsol they have helped us immensely and we have been like fundraising since the part that we need to get the parts okay. and we need to like fix the robot before the competition, competition. and we need it to get done we also have uh, another game we have a gaming company na- named blue boy games they have also been helping us and they have also in fact met us personally okay. and explained their entire com- like their entire company okay. and but they have also like sponsored our robot So big thanks to them as well. Awesome. So let's summarize everything what we discussed here. So you guys are a bunch of uh, from school, got together, have passion for robotics, and there's this competition, uh, FTS, uh, FTC, and you are build every 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 year they come up with a season, and you guys are building a robot for this season. There are fifteen people. someone who wants to join the uh, make a team everyone is welcome 15 people team they can build a robot how do we learn robotics skills there are a bunch of resources online and then there is a basic robot start with the basic robot another major point is finances so you got to do a lot of fundraising and uh, uh, marketing as well then there is team building you have to separate the tasks Uh, a lot of you are divided into coding designing uh, finance technical non technical so this summarizes everything right yeah anything uh, so next i want to ask like what's the future like what uh, what's the, what's the future look like okay this uh, this there's this competition are there any other competitions uh, about, uh, you also mentioned that there, there are you guys are helping uh, other students working with ngos to teach them what are the future what does the future look uh, look like with you guys uh so as i said we have a lot of outreach mm-hmm. uh we are recently we helped like two foundations <coughs> wave and asha akriti mm-hmm. uh wave is a foundation which is like we have we have conducted a lego workshop for them where we have taught them basic like not basic but an average level of stem concepts to like teach them what stem is and spread the concept mm. so that when they become uh, when they grow up they want to become engineers as well got it because as stem rules the world <laughs> yeah and we also are helping asha akriti okay. which is a deaf and mute foundation okay as well everyone should learn stem yes. why not them and why not everyone so I came here with zero expectations. Yeah, you want to add something? Yeah, what's the future of this team? You say. Yeah. So uh, obviously we want to continue participating in such competitions. So first tech challenge, looking to get few more exp uh, ex- years of experience. Also, we want to do a competition called the first robotics challenge. So it's not that prevalent in India right now. There are only one or two teams going in because it's hard to build those robots. They're pretty huge robots. They're like three by three by three feet, and you have to get funding from the US, oh, one crore plus funding. So it's a little hard. But that's what our future plans. look like Incredible. and um, looking at the bigger picture what we're going to do in life many of us here are going to become engineers architects mm-hmm. uh, co- programmers software engineers variety of different things even one of us even wants to run a business but that does not mean that this will not help us 
it's a competition that gives us a lot of skills from leadership to technical skills as well. Got it, got it. So coming here, I just knew that you guys build robots. After coming here, I learned a lot about like what you guys do, where you guys come from, what's your passion, what's your future is. Definitely, definitely love spending time with you. And uh, anything that you want to share to other professional or other young children or uh, from schooling age, what do you guys want to give any suggestions to them? <laughs> yeah, I have. I have the only suggestion I gave or the only comment that I'm going to say, if there are youngsters and anyone who's watching this, this is fun. You can come here. Mm -hmm. You know, this doing such kind of cool stuff is not only fun, but also it's, you know, gain expertise on which, you know, which is useful in your future. You can use it for keeping that future aside. It's a lot of fun, you know, building something new, something out of your hand that's fr that starts from a small screw and becomes this much big robot. Mm -hmm. Who, what doesn't, what more happiness do you need? What, what more thrills other than this? So, so if at all uh, you are into this definitely come learn do it and just take part in it you will learn a lot of stuff definitely help gonna help you in the future yeah just want to say participate in such competitions it's really fun try it out start from a basic competition like the first lego league participate in first competitions don't hesitate to reach out to us we're available on our instagram page which will be in the video as well on our instagram page and also on twitter on youtube both just contact us you can come over here we will not we will not stop helping people who reach out and uh, just contact team alphas participate in comp such competitions enjoy the process overall yeah yeah it's a competition but it's not a competition to learn it's yes. a competition to develop yeah Another thing I'd like to add for any children watching, if you'd like to join us, uh, just, just so you know, you don't need any type of background or any type of former knowledge in order to join us. You just need to have the determination and willing to be um, consistent. You just have to show up here two times a week and you will have a place on the team as long as you complete your work. Uh, last but not least, we're engineering the future. The, uh, the future engineers and yes. we're the one who are going to engineer that is the future. Motto. That's awesome. Awesome. That was fun, guys. It was an amazing uh, podcast and I loved spending time with you. I learned a lot of things. Definitely looking forward to uh, what you guys are going to build. And uh, I, I, be, I believe I'm going to be at the competition. Where is the competition at? In Goa. Goa. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. But best of luck for the competition. Hope you guys win. And hope you this story will inspire many other students like this. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Likewise.